Okay, so we starting with uh, was we last time we started with Poisson process, um, and today we're going to look at interval time between Poisson event or Poisson process. Um, can you give me one or two examples of a Poisson process? Yes, sir. One example is. Um, Patients waiting to see a doctor. Patients waiting, yeah, arrival of patients. Yeah, arrival, arrival of patients at maybe a clinic. At a hospital. Uh huh. And mm -hmm. uh, the the number of quick the number of patients arriving to see a, a doctor at a particular time. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So. When you take the event here to be the arrival of patients at a particular clinic. So let's say the first patient arrived at this time point. Can you see the diagram? Yes, please. Good. Then the second patient arrived at this time point. So when you say T1, the time interval between the arrival of the first event, the occurrence of the first event, and that of the second event, T2 is the time interval between the second event and the third event, et cetera, et cetera. So you have T3 with the time interval between the second and the third event, et cetera. So T1 here denotes the time when the first Poisson event occurred. T2 is the time of the, or, or the first, the, the, the time the first event ended until the second event ends. Have you seen? So that's the, the time interval between the second and the third event. So we call it inter arrival time of the Poisson process. Okay? Yes. So we, we have a theory here. So we say let n of t, this set, be a Poisson process where lambda is a rate. The inter arrival time t1, t2, t3 up to T and are independent and identically distributed exponential random variable, each with mean one over lambda. So what this theory is saying is that if you have a Poisson process, a process occurring according to a, a, a Poisson process, um, then the time in between the occurrence will follow exponential distribution with mean one over lambda. If the Poisson process are occurring at the rate, at the unit rate of lambda, then the mean, then the, the, the mean for the, how do you call it? The entire arrival time will be one over lambda. I hope it's clear. So what he's saying that the time interval between the occurrence of Poisson process follow exponential distribution with parameter lambda or mean one over lambda, okay? So the proof, the proof is here. It's that we first find the distribution of T1. So we are going to find the distribution of T1, distribution of T2, distribution of T3, distribution of Tn. And according to this theory, they all follow the same distribution and have identical, and then independent, identically distributed, with all of them with mean one over lambda. So first we start with T1. When we finish with T1, we go to T2. And by induction, once we are able to do it for T1, prove for T1 and T2, by induction, we can conclude that it works for all the other time intervals. Are you okay? So yes, first please. of all, we find the distribution function of T1. You know how to define distribution function. Distribution function, that's a cumulative distribution function. So T, the distribution function is defined as the probability that T1 is greater than T. T1 is greater than T. So it means the first, what does it mean? It means we want to find the probability that the first event here, after t t t time 
you know, the time here could be hours, it could be days, it could be years, etc. Okay. So mm. this is a probability that the first event, the first event occur after what? After T hours or this? After T okay. hours, this small T, as well, mm. after small T hours. So we are going to find that probability. If the first event occur after T, T hours, then it means at the T hours, there was no, there was no event. Do you agree? Yes, please. So uh, the probability that the first event occur after small T hours is also the same as the, the, the number of events occurring at T, because the first event occur after T. The number of event n n t means the number of event. The the number of event occurring at time t will be zero. Do you agree? And we yes. know that n t follow the Poisson distribution, uh, with mm. uh, with mean uh, lambda. So this will be this will be lambda lambda t raised to the power zero e raised to the power lambda minus lambda t all over zero factorial. So this will be e raised to the power minus lambda t. Mm. You get it. The Poisson mm. distribution says that lambda t raised to the power n, e raised to the power minus lambda t all over n factorial. But in this case, n is equal to zero. n is equal to zero. n is equal to zero. And because n is equal to zero, my lambda t raised to the power zero will be zero. And, and all over n factorial also will be zero. So it will be e raised to the power minus lambda t. So this will be the distribution function. So the opposite will be p of t one less or equal to small t. This will be one minus uh, e raised to the power minus lambda t. That's the one minus that. So the PD, how do you determine the PD when we know the distribution function? You you differentiate. When you differentiate the distribution function, uh, this is the distribution function. The distribution function is T1 less or equal to T. Have you seen it? When you differentiate, you get lambda e raised to the power minus lambda T. So this is the distribution, this is the PDF. PDF of T1. So T1 therefore has the exponent, this is the exponential distribution with mean one over lambda. You know that. Yes. Uh -huh. So this is the exponential distribution with mean one over lambda. So T1 therefore has the exponential distribution with mean one over lambda. So we have shown it for T1. So next we need to show it for T2. Are you okay? We need to show it for T2. T2 means that T1 has already occurred. <coughs> Have you seen it? If you yes. are talking about T2, that's the occurrence of the second event, the time of occurrence of the second event. So it presupposes that T1 has already occurred. So we want to find the probability that T2 is greater than T, given that T1 is equal to S, because we are assuming T1 has already occurred. Okay. And this is the same as, um, you know, the second event occurred after t, and the first event occurred at the time s. Second event occurred at what time? After time t. Mm. The first event occurred at the time s. So in between the first, the first, and the second event. Uh, in between S and T, how many events occur? We have two in between events. S, in between S and S plus T, how many mm -hmm. events occur? Two events. No. Zero, zero events. Okay. okay. The, the first, we are, we are assuming that the first event occur at the time S. Yes. The first event occur at the time s. So it means when you add the time t to s, 
between the time s to t s plus t s plus t because the second event occur after t after t seconds have you seen it so yeah. that that the time interval between the first and the second event is more than t more than small t mm -hmm. so it means zero event will occur in the interval between s and s plus t do you, do you get it given that mm -hmm. t t1 is equal to s yes. uh -huh. which means that zero event zero event will occur between s and s plus t because of independence because of independence, we can remove this. Mm. So it can also be written like this, that zero event in the interval zero to t because of stationarity. We are what you call stationarity of increment. So it's the same as zero event in the interval zero to t, which is the same as p of n t equal to zero, this one, which is the e raised to the power minus lambda t. Have you seen it? So yes. the probability that the second event is greater than small t is also e raised to the power lambda t, which is the same thing we had for um, for t one. T one. Uh huh. It's the same expression we had for t one. The probability that t one is greater than t. So the probability that t two is greater than t is also e raised to the power minus lambda t. So thus T1 has the exponential, also have the exponential distribution with mean one over lambda. By induction, it is clear that T1, T2, dot dot up to T and are independent, identically distributed, each with mean what? One over lambda. So what the conclusion here is that the inter all the interrobite time of the Poisson process in the Poisson event, the entire time all follow the exponential distribution. So when the process follow the Poisson distribution, the time of occurrence and then entire and time of the event will follow the exponential distribution. Mean one of them. So that's a theory. So let's look at an example clear example here. Suppose that earthquake occur at random in a certain region at a rate of two per year. If an earthquake has just occurred, if an earthquake has just occurred, find the probability that it will take at least three years before the next, next earthquake. So you say if an earthquake has just occurred, was well, the probability to take at least three years before the next earthquake. For a Poisson process, you always have to identify your lambda. Your lambda is always the time per, and the, the, the rate per unit time. Here, the time here is years, it's in years. So unit time will be one year. So how many earthquakes do you expect to occur within a year? So it's two, two, it's two earthquakes. per year. So yes, we have two earthquakes. So it means that two here is the lambda. The lambda is always the rate per unit time. And time is one year. Mm. Are we saying when you are dealing with okay, the, the rate per second? I guess the one second will be the lambda. So here the lambda here is two. Lambda is two. So in every person, the first thing you identify is your lambda. The lambda here is two. So the earthquake occur at random at the rate of two per year. Mm -hmm. They occur yes. according to Poisson process at the rate of what? Two per year. The problem can be solved in two ways. So you have two approaches to the solution of the problem. If the next earthquake occur T years, you see the last earthquake, the next earthquake, if it occur after T years, then by, by the theorem one, the theorem we just proved, T has an exponential distribution with mean one over two. 
why is the mean one over two? Because the rate is two. If the rate for the Poisson process is two, then the mean for the time of arrival, in the arrival time will be one over two. You, you get the sequence based on the theory proof up okay. there. You see, if the Poisson process has a rate of lambda, then the inter-arrival time will have exponential distribution with mean one over lambda. Mm. So okay. if the Poisson process has a rate, unit rate of two per year, then it means the inter-arrival time of the earthquake, first, the, the time interval between first, second earthquake, second, third earthquake, will follow an exponential distribution. So note, the process is Poisson. The time between the process is exponential. You get it? Yes. Uh -huh. When you have a Poisson process, the time between Poisson process is exponential. It's always so in every course. So don't forget that. That's all that we are doing. I'm telling you. OK. Uh -huh. So if the next earthquake okay after t years, then by theory one, t has what? The exponential distribution with mean one over two. Then what do we want to find? You want to find what? The probability that, what's the question? Find the probability that the next earthquake will occur after three years. So you want to find that t, uh, the time of occurring of the next earthquake, that's what we call t. So you want to find the probability that t is greater or equal to what? Three. Okay. Have you seen it? So because it follows the Poisson process, it follows the exponential distribution, we mean one over two. It means the PDF will be two e raised to the power minus two t. Have you seen two e raised to the power minus two t? Uh, because the process the, the PDF is lambda e raised to the power minus lambda t. And lambda is two. So mm. the the PDF for the exponential distribution will be two e raised to the power minus two t. So we different because it's greater than three. We differentiate the PDF from three to infinity, and that gives an e raised to the power minus six. That's the first approach. Mm. Uh -huh. The second approach is to use the number of occurrence. Have you seen it? If okay. it, you use the number of occurrence, the Poisson, the Poisson distribution itself. So first we use exponential distribution to solve it. Now we are going to use Poisson distribution to solve the same problem. So we let X denote what the number of equity which occur in, in a three year period after the last earthquake. Okay. So okay. if the, the time of occurrence is greater or equal to three, it means between the zero, the time zero up to three, it means no earthquake occurred. Because we know that the next the, the next earthquake occurred after three years. After three years. It means before the three years there was no earthquake after the last one. Mm -hmm. So it's the same as this, this probability the same as well, the probability that X the number of earthquakes is equal to zero because the next earthquake occur after three years. So this is the same the probability that the the number of earthquakes within that three year period from zero to three is zero. Uh, if I'm having a class and the first student mm -hmm. arrive after five minutes, are you listening? Yes, please. I'm having a class. The first student enter the class after five minutes. So before the five minutes, how many students do I have? No, zero. Zero. I don't have any. So the next mm. essay, okay, after three years. But so before the three years, before the okay. three years period, the number of earthquakes that occur within that three years period is zero. Zero. Uh -huh. So you put into the Poisson distribution, and we know that the, the X will have what? A Poisson distribution with mean three times two, lambda times T, you remember? 
lambda t. Yes. The mean, the mean for the Poisson process is always lambda t. Lambda is two, t is three years. So the mean will be what six. Have you seen it? So the probability okay. that x is equal to zero is six raised to the power zero. E raised to the power minus six all over zero factorial, which will still give us E raised to the power minus six. So any of these approaches are correct. In this exam, you use only one. One of them. All right. So let's look at another problem. It's a suppose event occur according to Poisson process with a constant rate lambda show that if the first event occur after t after t after t and t has the exponential distribution with mean one over lambda. So this is the this is the same as the proof here up to this point. Up to this point. That okay. question which was a thing. It's here. A third answer of saying T, T1, they call it T. Okay. A hands of T1. So is a proof from here up to here. It ends here. That the okay. occurrence of the first Poisson event. It follow. So that's a proof. So that's why I've written C for a month. Have you seen it? Then yes, the B pass is suppose patients arrive at random by setting clinic at the rate of two per hour. This, this is the same as the previous question we saw. I said here, it's talking about patient. For the previous question we saw, the rate was still two. And the time given for the probability is three, 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 three years. Yes, yeah. it's three hours. So you get the same thing, E raised to the power minus. You get the same answer, E raised to the power minus six. The third that here is talking about patients. The other one is talking about earthquake. So it's the same solution. You can use the two approaches to solve. Are you All okay? Right. Yes, please. Good. Then let's look at theorem three. Where is theorem two? There's no theorem two. Okay, so let's look at theorem three. We we'll look at for some for some more examples as we move on. Let T1 dot dot up to Tn denote the interval time of a counting process. You know, Poisson, Poisson distribution is also called counting process. Poisson is a counting process. You are just counting the number of events occurring between a certain time interval. Have you seen it? So we also call the Poisson distribution a counting process. The Poisson process is also called counting process. Good. Then this has a Poisson process. This is a Poisson process with rate lambda. If and only if T1 does have to Tn are independent and identically distributed exponential random variable with mean one over lambda. So this year we approve already. Okay. But it's just telling you that you can move the reverse. That's why I use the word if and only if. Okay. So if this is, this is exponential, then this is Poisson. If this is Poisson, then this is also exponential. So they always move together. Good. So let's look at example three. Have you seen example three? Yes, please. Good. So this is a short, short example, and you'll be seeing some of these examples in your exam or similar examples in your exam. Okay, so example three, telephone calls arrive at an ST such that the entire arrival time are independent and identically distributed exponential random variable with mean one over lambda. So here is telling you the interarrival time mm -hmm. uh, of mm -hmm. a Poisson process follow an exponential distribution with mean one over two. And I told you that whenever you have exponential distribution between Poisson two events, then it means those events follow uh, uh, Poisson distribution. You get it. 
Yes, and when, whenever you have a Poisson process, then the interarrival time between the Poisson process will follow exponential. Yes, have you seen it? So okay. in the same manner, whenever you have occurrence of event, the time interval between occurrence of events following exponential distribution, then by Turing 3, the process itself will follow what Poisson. And when we have Poisson process occurring at certain time, then the arrival time of the event will follow exponential. So it works both ways. Okay. You get it. So yes. if the exponential, the event is having exponential distribution with mean one over two, the, no, mm -hmm. if the time of arrival, interarrival time is following the exponential distribution with mean one over two, then the processes itself uh, will follow mm -hmm. uh, a Poisson distribution with rate lambda, with unit rate lambda, or the lambda here will be two. Please, are you okay? Yes, please. Great. So if the telephone call has just been received, find the probability that the next calls, the next four calls will arrive after two minutes. So what's the time here? Two minutes. So two after minutes. two minutes, we're expecting how many calls? Four calls to occur after two minutes. So we let the solution, we let n of t denote the number of calls arriving in the time interval zero to t. Since the interarrival time of the process are independent, identically distributed exponential random variables with mean one over two, it follows that n of two. What is n of two? What does it denote? As does the, 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 the number of number of telephone calls within the time interval zero to two minutes. That's N2. N2 yes. means the number of telephone calls between the time interval zero to two. That's what I defined here. You see? So T mm. here is two. So N2 means the, the number of what? Telephone, telephone calls call. or arrival of telephone is it tele uh, arrival of calls at the telephone exchange between the mm. time interval zero to two minutes? Oh. Have you seen it? So okay. if the entire arrival time of the calls follow the exponential distribution with mean <laughs> one over two, then N2 has the Poisson distribution uh, with mm. mean lambda t. What is lambda? Lambda is two, two, and T is also two. Please, are you okay? Okay. Lambda is two, why is lambda two? Because the exponential distribution has a mean of one over two. Uh, so lambda mm -hmm. is always the reciprocal of the exponential, the mean of the exponential distribution. So if the mean is one over two, it means lambda is two. And here N2 means T is equal to two minutes. So the, 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 the mean for the Poisson distribution will be lambda T, which is equal to two times two. So lambda two. is two and T is equal to also two. Please, are you okay? Yes, please. Great. You are doing well. So now let's go to the question. Now we've, we've done the, the, we've gotten the parameters. So what do we want to, by the question, what do we want to determine? We want to find the, the probability that, the want next to find the probability that four calls will arrive after two minutes. Have, have you seen it? So yeah. we represent this number of, ta the time that four calls will occur to be T. And we, uh, the fourth call will come to be T. So we want to find the probability that T is greater than two. Is it find the probability that four calls will occur after two? 
after two minutes. Okay. Mm. So if all calls will occur after two minutes, it means how many calls will occur before two minutes? That'll be zero. It's not zero. <laughs> the, the fourth, listen, the fourth call, you want to find that probably the, the four calls who arrive after two minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, if four yes. calls arrive after two minutes, It means before the two minutes, how many calls? Three calls. Okay, so we know that after two minutes was four calls. Mm -hmm. Have you seen it? After two minutes, mm -hmm. it was four calls. So before two minutes, it could be zero call, it could be one call, could be two call or maximum three call. That be before the two minutes. Because okay. we know that after two minutes there were four calls. Mm -hmm. Have you seen it? So yes, yes. before the two minutes, it could either be zero calls. If there was zero calls before the two minutes, then if after two minutes, all the four calls okay after what two minutes. If there yes. were the, there was only one call before two minutes. It means three calls will occur after two minutes. If there were two calls before two minutes, two calls will occur after two minutes. Because there were a total of four calls. But we know that after two minutes, there were four calls. But we don't know exactly how many calls were there before the two minutes. Mm -hmm. So before the two minutes, it could happen that there were zero calls, one call, two calls, or three calls. So, T greater than two means that the number of calls between zero to two minutes is less or equal to three. Have you seen it? Mm. And we know that N2 follow the Poisson distribution, which mean what? Four. We mean four. Four. Which is two times two. Which is two times. That's the mean of the Poisson. So yes. first of all, it will be four raised to the power zero, e raised to the power minus four over zero factorial plus yeah. four raised to the power one. Have you seen it? So you do it mm -hmm. one by one. Four raised okay. to the power, e raised to the power minus four over one factorial plus four raised to the power two e raised to the power minus four over two factorial plus four raised to the power three. So you do all of them. Have you seen it? So that's the summation I've done here. So you do it for all the four different scenarios. For zero, you know, this is multiplying all of them. Then for one, for two, then for three. So when you simplify this probability, it gives 0 0.433. Are you okay? Are you okay? Yes, please. Great. So let's go to the next question. Suppose that the number of earthquakes in a certain region in T years has a Poisson distribution with mean T over two. Has a Poisson distribution with mean what? T over two. So in one year, what would be the, the mean of the Poisson distribution? Yeah. For three years, the mean is T over two. For four years, the mean will be what, four over two. Four For five two. years, the mean will be five over two. Mm. Huh? For one yes, year, please. for one year, the mean will be what? One over two. Good. And always the rate the unit time is always the lambda. If you are dealing with years, then you are dealing with one year, the, the rate per year. So the rate per year, when and one year means t is equal to one, that will be one over two. 
So that's why I wrote that the lambda here is equal to what? One over two. One over two. Have you seen it? Lambda right. is always the rate per unit time. Know that. So the rate for two years will be two over two. The rate for three years will be three over two. That's lambda t. Have you seen it? So it means our lambda here is what? One over two. Have you seen it? Please, have you seen it? Okay. So lambda is one over two. For every question, the first thing you have to determine is the lambda. The lambda is always directly or indirectly given in the question. Okay. If you want to answer such question, always the first thing you need to find is the lambda. Without the lambda, you cannot solve the problem. You know, we need the lambda to solve the problem. So what's the question? If an earthquake has just occurred, find the probability that there will be no earthquake in three years. You find the probability that there will be no earthquake in three years. So we let T be the time measured in years until the next earthquake Okay, Then T has the exponential distribution with mean what? Two. two. Why mean two? The mean is two because the unit rate for the Poisson distribution is one over two. One over two is two. always the reciprocal. So the yeah, mean yeah. for the T exponential distribution. Mm -hmm. The process follow Poisson, the time follow what? Exponential, know that. So mm -hmm. if the process has a mean one over two, the time will have a mean two. If the process has a mean one over five, the time will have a mean what? Two, uh, five, sorry. So we are required to determine what? What's the question? If an earthquake has just okay, find the probability that there will be no earthquake in the next three years. So we are required to find T greater or equal to three. Are you getting me? The next three, no. there will be no earthquake. Please, are you okay? This two in your handout, this two is supposed to be three. Okay. Typographical okay. error. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you want to find the probability that T greater or equal to three. So we integrate the, the exponential distribution. Exponential distribution of mean one over two is uh, with mean two is given by one over two e raised to the power minus t over two. So you integrate that from three to infinity, and that will give us e raised to the power minus three over two, which will give you zero point two two three one. Good. So that's example four. Then we look at theorem two. We look at theorem two. Are you seen theorem two? Yes, please. Uh -huh. You know, we've looked at theorem three already. Three came before two. Mm -hmm. So we are now on theorem two. Good. Mm. Any questions so far before we start with theorem two? Yes, sir, please, no, no question. No question, okay. So now we are going to look at what we call waiting time. Waiting time. So, do, do you understand what you call waiting time? Suppose I want to start a class. And I, I, I told you the class prefect that I can only start the class uh, mm -hmm. till I get five people, the quorum. Mm. Uh -huh. So the time taken for the fifth person to arrive from the time zero, suppose the time is starting from two, then two is the time zero. zero. Okay. So suppose it takes 30 minutes for the fifth student 
to arrive for us to start the class. We call that time waiting time. Okay. Waiting time for the fifth student to arrive. So we denote that waiting time by WN. So W1 is a waiting time for the first student to arrive. W2 is a waiting time from the time zero for the mm -hmm. second student to arrive. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So what will be W3? Don't so use w the word student. Use the general term. Mm -hmm. W3 so is a waiting time for the third yeah. event to occur. In, you, you get it. If you are using earthquake, then W3 will be the waiting time for the third earthquake to occur. Mm -hmm. And this is different from the inter-arrival time. Inter-arrival time is the time between the occurrence of the event, while WN is the waiting time for the end event to occur. Have you seen it? Okay. So it means WN. Huh? WN. Are you listening to me? Yes, please. WN will be equal to T1 plus T2 dot 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 up to what? Tn. T1 plus T2 dot 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 up to what? Tn. That will be the WN. Have you seen it? So yes. the first person okay at T1. Then the, the, the second person between the second and the third occurrence will be what T2. So when you add all this entire arrival time, uh, it gives you mm. WN. Please, are you okay? Yes, please. So for instance, when you go to the first page of the slide, T1 is the entire arrival time between the first two process. The arrival time between the first two. T2 is the entire arrival time between what? Between event two and, 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 and the event three. And three. Mm. So if you want to know the waiting time for the third event to occur, then it will be T1 plus what? T2. It will T2. give you the waiting time. The waiting time is the time from zero to the next event. The waiting time we are, we are waiting for arrives. Mm -hmm. So I want to start a class. I have students numbering 100. And we've decided that by the class that so we get 10 students. We will not start the class. So the first student comes, second student comes. Then you are praying, oh, now we have five students. Can we start? No, no. We say we are waiting till we get what? How many students? Ten students. Ten students. Then the ten students occur 30 minutes after the time zero. Are you getting So that 30 minutes, we call it what? The waiting time for the okay. ten students to arrive. Have you seen it? So yeah. if the inter-arrival time has exponential distribution, then the waiting time will have the gamma distribution. In the last semester, I taught you that the sum of independent exponential random variable is gamma distribution. Gamma distribution. Are we so mm. if the inter-arrival time is exponential, and the waiting time with the sum of independent Poisson random variables who have what the gamma distribution with PDF given by this. So that's a short proof over here. So it's just the sum of n independent Poisson exponential distribution. And that will give you gamma distribution. Have you seen it? Then there's a mm. proof here, which I've also said before as a past question. All the questions here are past questions, which I have used in the notes. So don't, don't joke with them. If you joke, you will perish. And I don't want <laughs> you to perish. <laughs> but don't tell the other people. <laughs> 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 
Oh, I'm recording it, so they are hearing. Okay. So, recording. All right. Okay, so let's continue. Show that okay. if W1, what is W1? The waiting time for the first event to occur. What is okay. W2? The waiting time the waiting till time. the second event occur. So these are waiting time. They know the time measured from zero at which mm. event occur according to a Poisson process Assessing. with a constant rate lambda. Then the distribution function of WN. Uh, the distribution mm. function of WN is given by this expression, where WN is the time till the end event okay. Okay? Okay. Good, so the proof. Can I go ahead with the proof? Yes, or please. Solution. I'm I've written solution because it was a past question. But in the book, mm -hmm. it is written as a proof. Great. So the distribution function, we want to find the distribution function. So the distribution function is defined as the random variable less or equal to a certain value. So we find the probability that Wn is less or equal to P. This is the same as 1 minus P of Wn greater than P. Have you seen it? Mm. It means the nth event, please, are you listening? Mm -hmm. What it means here, the nth event occur after the time t. Are you listening again? The nth event occur mm -hmm. after the time, because I said Wn is greater than t. Okay. What it means that the nth event Okay, after the time t, we want to find this is the probability that the end event occur after time t. It's like saying that the 10th student okay after 30 minutes arrives after 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. When I use a student scenario, it means that let's say the 10th student, when we write w10 greater than 30. It means the 10th student arrived after 30 minutes. So minutes. This one means that the end event occur after what? T minutes. Okay, let me ask you a question using the student because that one you understand it better. Mm. <laughs> Suppose we have 100 students in the class. And I'm supposed to start the class with 10 students. And the 10th student, the 10th student came to class after 30 minutes. So it means before the 30 minutes, how many students were in the class? Now we have nine students. It could be nine. It, it could, could be, be it could be eight. It could be seven. It could be six. Up to it zero. Could be five, up to zero. Happened that all the ten students came after thirty minutes. It will still fall yeah. under the same category. Or it could happen that nine students came before the thirty minutes. But we all we know is that the ten students yeah. came after okay. thirty minutes. But we don't know when the other nine also arrived. But right. we know that the ten students came after what thirty minutes. So if the, the end event occur after t minutes, then it may be between zero to t before the t minute is n minus one or less. Have you seen it? Yes. The number of events will be less or equal to n minus one. Okay. And we know that n t follow a Poisson distribution with mean lambda t. And t follow the Poisson distribution with mean lambda t. So this is the same as you can write this as sigma from zero to what n n minus one. 
n of t equal to r. Okay? okay. n of t is equal to r. And because nt follow a Poisson distribution with mean lambda t, we can write this probability as well. Lambda t raised to the power r. Uh, e raised to the power minus lambda t over r factorial. So hence, that is a proof. So the distribution of WN is called Erlang N distribution. Erlang N distribution, which is a form of gamma, a special form of gamma, gamma distribution. It's a special case of the gamma distribution. Okay? So okay. V of WN less than T is mm. equal to this equation. So let's solve a problem. We'll soon finish so that we continue. We'll have another class next week. Example six. Are you seeing example six? Sir, so example six is here. Yes. Customers of a certain bank arrive according to Poisson process at the rate of two per minute. Per minute. Poisson process at the rate of two per minute. Please, have you seen it? Yes. If a customer has just arrived, find the probability that the next three customers will arrive after four minutes. The next three customers. This is a waiting time. So you get mm. three customers arriving after what? Four minutes. Four minutes. you say the next three customers. It means what's the probability that the waiting time for the next three customers who arrive is four minutes. That's another way of saying it. What's mm. the probability the waiting time? With this one, you are not waiting till the next customer come, but you are waiting till you get what three customers arriving. And what is the probability that waiting time will be after four minutes, will exceed four minutes? That's what. So we denote that waiting time till the third customer arrives to be W3. Have you seen it? Yes. The waiting time till the third customer arrives. We call it what W3. W3. So we should find the probability that W3 is greater than 4. If you are not able to interpret your question this way, you can never solve it. So what do we want to determine? That W3 is greater than 4. four. So let's start the solution. P of W3 greater than 4. What does it mean? It means the waiting time for the third customer to arrive is greater than four. So before four, how many customers do you have? It could be zero, it could be one, it could two be two. Or three. Mm. No. Please wait. Mm -hmm. Before four minutes, before four minutes, how many customers are you likely to have? Before the four, we have, we have so zero. The third customer okay came after four after, minutes. After four minutes, so how many customers are you likely to have before the four from zero to four? We know so that four, the, the we, third we have, customer came after four, but we don't know about the first two. Okay. The first two may be before or after. Mm. Huh? Yes. The first customer may be before four or after four. We, we are not sure. The second customer may be before four or after four. Oh. Mm. But the third customer there, we know the, okay, it came after four. But we are not too sure about what? The, the first... Right, right, right. The arrival time for the first, second, the first and the second customer. So the number of customers who arrive in the time interval zero to four, before four, could be zero, 
it could be one, one or, two. or it could be two. Yes. Have you seen it? So yes. this is the same as the probability that the number of customers arriving before four, before the time four, will be less or equal to two. It means it could be zero, one, or two. So this is the same as the probability that N4 is equal to zero, N4 is equal to one, N4 is equal to two. Have you seen it? That's from zero to two. Then you put in the Poisson process. The Poisson process will have mean of what? Eight. Why eight? Because the time is four uh, and the lambda is two. The lambda which is four eight. times two, lambda t, which will be eight. So the Poisson process will have a mean of what? Eight. So eight raised to the power zero, eight raised to the power one, eight raised to the power two. You compute it and it will give you 0 0.014. Oh. Great. Mm. Question seven. Have you seen question seven? These are all past questions I've given to you. I've given them to you. So just blow my paper for me. Okay. So let let n of t be a Poisson process rate pi per unit time. Show that the interarrival time t1, t2, tn are independent, identically distributed with a, uh, a distributed exponential random variable, each with mean one over five. It's the same as the proof I gave from theory, the first theory. But I saw the lambda, they are using five. That's all. Have you seen it? When you see theory in one, so instead of using lambda, lambda they are using five. It's the same thing. So instead of lambda t, they are using five t. So I replace the lambda with what? Five. With five. So we are showing that if this one, it's a Poisson process with rate five per unit time. Then this one, T1, T2, T, and will be independent and identically distributed exponential random variable, each with mean one over five. So the proof is given the same as what we proved earlier on over there. Then B says that, so these are all past questions. B says, I show that W1, W2, what is W1? Waiting time. Don't forget. W always denotes what? Waiting time. So if W1, W2 denote time measured from zero at which each event occurs, at which events occur according to a Poisson process with a constant rate by then W4 greater than T is given by this where W4 is a time till the fourth event. So this one also has been proved earlier. I said that now we are using T. Have you seen it? Mm. Have you seen it? Uh -huh. So this is a Poisson distribution. We mean 5T. So whenever you're dealing with two years, then T will be two. When you are dealing with four years, T will be four or five seconds. It, uh, T could be in seconds, minutes, hours, years, decades, etc. Et so we, we first find the distribution of T1. Have you seen it? Mm. We find the distribution of T1. Then we, we do that for the B part. That the solution is also given for the B part. It's similar to the proofs above and I've solved them. So let's look at example eight. These are all past questions. Have you seen example eight? Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So that one is also similar to some questions we have solved previously. I think example two or so. It's similar to where we give first method and second method. Have mm. you seen it? It's similar mm -hmm. to that. So when you look at that example, it's still I've solved it. So you go through those examples and you understand this one very well. And this also I've solved a similar one above. 
I've explained a similar one about, we just talk about uh, four minutes, the time for two events to occur after four minutes. So you can look at that to solve this problem. Then I'll give you other past questions. When you look at this question, they are all past questions which have been solved. All the questions here are solved. All the questions here are solved. So um, example nine here is solved, which is also a past question. You follow the same examples I've explained earlier on. Okay. Then example 10 here. Uh, it's also solved, and it's in the handout I've given to you. Okay. Okay. Uh huh. It's in the handout I gave to you, so it's also solved, and it follow the same examples above. Great. Example eleven. So so many examples. Uh, example mm. ten. Example 11, uh, full session B question. You see the way they are arranged. Mm. Full session B question. Example 10, example 11, a uh, full session B question. I'm not saying the same questions will come back, the same format. The format. So once you understand the format, you can by all means pass. Then example 12 also is a full examination question. I've solved similar ones above, okay? Mm. However, I've also given you the solution because I love, I love the class. <laughs> so, <laughs> then, so tomorrow at two, we'll meet again. We'll talk about the non-stationary Poisson processes. So, so far we look at Poisson processes where the, the lambda is fixed. But we look at situation where the lambda is a function of T. We'll look at it tomorrow. Any questions so far? Any questions? No, sir, please, no question. No question. <laughs>